Hi guys, it's Angie with Fun Endeavors Tie-Dye Lab. Today, I'm going to make a reverse dyed center burst shirt. I've washed the shirt and I took it straight out of the washing machine so it's damp with just plain water. I haven't soaked it in anything, but I do have it turned inside out. Today, I'm going to reverse dye a blue shirt. The color of this shirt is closer to royal blue than it is to navy. I'm going to begin by centering the shirt and this process is going to go really fast. But down below this video in the description is a link to another video which shows how to center a shirt. When I center a shirt, I get both sides of the front of the shirt right next to each other and both sides of the back of the shirt next to each other. That way, whenever I apply the dye to the shirt, the front looks more symmetrical and so does the back. I want the center of the burst to be a little bit above the center of the shirt. So I'm going to fold the shirt in half and use a piece of chalk to mark the center of the shirt. Then I'm going to make another mark where I'd like the center of the burst to be. Then using my washable marker and a piece of kite string, I'm going to draw an arc or half of a circle onto the shirt. I'm drawing several lines on just for my reference. You really only need one line to tie the shirt. I'm going to fan fold this outer line and then I'm going to tie it with some sinew. Whenever I do a reverse dye, I use sinew to tie the shirt. The sinew is wax coated and so when I wrap it around the shirt and I pull it really tight, it tightens down on itself and it forms a barrier that won't allow the color remover to get under that area. That's what will keep that area of the shirt the original color. In this case, it's going to be the blue color. If I tied the shirt with something else like kite string, when I submerged the entire shirt in the color remover, almost all the color would end up being removed from the shirt. To tie the sinew, I wrap it around a couple of times, and for this initial tie, I'm pulling it gently because I don't want to shift all my fan folds. Once it starts to catch, I can pull it a little bit tighter without it moving the folds. Going toward the right side or the center of the shirt, I'm going to straighten my fan folds and I'm going to add additional sinew lines, but I'm going to make them closer together as they get closer to the center of the shirt. When I get down to these very small areas, I'm going to do a few extra wraps because I want to make sure it doesn't come untied. Then I'm going to straighten the fan folds on the other side of the shirt and tie them as well. This time, as I'm going out toward the outer portion of the shirt, I'm going to make the sinew lines get a little bit further apart from each other as they go out to the end of the shirt. To reverse dye or remove the color or discharge this shirt, whichever you want to call it, I'm going to use a product called Out White Bright Laundry Whitener. I find this product in my local store on the laundry aisle. It's usually near the bleach products. However, if you're having a hard time finding this product, 
I have a link down below in the description for where you can purchase it from Amazon. I'm removing the dye from quite a few shirts all at the same time. So I've taken a plastic container outside and I've placed the shirts inside the tub or the container. This shirt is the shirt at the very top of the tub. I'm using this product outside because it does have a smell. I also wear my respirator for this entire process. I begin by sprinkling the out white bright over all of the shirts. I give a fairly generous coating. Then I'm going to pour some boiling hot water over the top. Right now, I'm working to remove the color from a spiral shirt. I've already made that video, and I'll leave a link down below in the description if you'd like to see it. In just a few minutes, I'm gonna add a little bit more boiling hot water over the top of these shirts. I wanna go ahead and have them pretty much submerged. As you can tell though, the color remover has already started to work on most of the shirts. This shirt has turned a bright orange, which is a little bit unusual. After I add some more boiling hot water into the container, I'm gonna go ahead and sprinkle some more out on top of the water. I'm gonna leave the shirts for just a little while longer and allow some more of the color to be removed. The entire process was less than 10 minutes. To rinse the shirt, I took it to my utility sink and rinsed it out in some cold water. Then I left it tied and put it in the washing machine along with the rest of these shirts in this container. I added a little bit of Dharma's textile detergent to the washer, and then after the shirts were finished washing, I placed them inside of my soda ash solution, and I allowed them to soak for at least 20 to 30 minutes. Then I spun the shirt out in my panda spin dryer and set it aside to allow it to dry out completely. Because this is such a thick fold, I wanna make sure that the inside of the shirt is dry when I go to apply the dye. If it's too damp on the inside of the shirt when I apply the dye, I usually don't get as good a color saturation as I do when the shirt is dry. So this is what the shirt looks like after it went through the washer and soaked in the soda ash. Do you remember how it turned bright orange in the color remover? Well, it didn't stay that color. It ended up being a light blue. So it didn't remove all of the blue color, but it did take it to a much lighter shade. As I mentioned, I'm gonna ice dye this shirt. So I've placed it on top of a metal rack which is sitting down inside of a plastic tub or container. I'm using my silicone cake molds to make an ice barrier around the shirt. Down below in the description, I have a link for where I purchased these as well. I'm wrapping them around the shirt and I'm using some wooden clothespins to attach to the metal rack. That will hold all of these silicone cake molds up close to the shirt. Because I'm gonna apply powdered dye I'm trying to get the silicone cake mold as close to the side of the shirt as I can so that a whole lot of the dye doesn't fall off of the shirt. Since this shirt ended up being a light shade of blue, I thought I would use some colors that would work really well with the blue, so I chose a green color palette. I'm starting right at the end with green from Custom Colors. I'm going to use three more colors on the shirt, so I'm going to skip three spaces and add another line of the green. I'm going to continue this pattern down the shirt. If you're wondering what kind of spoon I'm using to apply the dye, it's a stainless steel lab spoon. I'll leave a link down below in the description for where I purchased them. The next color is Forest Green from Dharma. I'm gonna apply it in the sections after the green all the way down the shirt. The next color I'm using is Kelly Green from Dharma Trading Company. And I'm adding that to all the sections right after the forest green. Okay. 
In the final sections, I'm going to add forest green from Custom Colors. It has the same color name as the one from Dharma, but according to my liquid dyed color swatches, it's a much darker color. But we'll see how it ends up on the shirt. That's why I separated the two colors with the Kelly Green, just in case they're not that different. Now I'm going to add an additional sprinkle of soda ash on top of the dye, just to make sure that when the ice melts and runs through the shirt, there's still plenty of soda ash left in the shirt to react with the dye. And now I'm going to add the ice on top. You can see that some of the dye did fall off of the shirt down in the bottom of the container, but the silicone cake molds did a pretty good job holding most of it on top of the shirt. Now I'm going to put the shirt aside and allow this layer of ice to melt. After the first layer of ice melted, this is what the shirt looks like. I gently lifted it up and checked the back side, and it looks like the dye is going through to the back side pretty well. However, you can still see quite a bit of dye left on top, and there's not a whole lot of runoff down in the bottom of the container. So I'm going to go ahead and add another layer of ice on top of the shirt just to make sure that I get really good color saturation. Then I'm gonna put the shirt aside and allow it to process for at least 24 hours after this layer of ice melts. To rinse out the shirt, I took it to my utility sink and began rinsing in cold water to rinse out the soda ash. Then I went ahead and untied the shirt. Remember, I went ahead and left the shirt tied throughout the entire process. So it went through the color remover, I washed it in the washing machine, then soaked it in soda ash, spun it out of my pan to spin dryer, and it stayed tied the entire time. After I have the shirt untied, I'm gonna gradually warm the water up and continue rinsing in hot water. I'm rinsing it hot to rinse out any of the excess dye that didn't bond with the shirt. After a little while, I went ahead and ran some hot water in my sink, added a little bit of Blue Dawn dish detergent, and just allowed the shirt to soak. Whenever the water would cool off, I would change it out and I continued the soaking process until the water was almost clear. Then I threw the shirt into my washing machine and I washed it in hot water using a little bit of Dharma's textile detergent. After the shirt was washed and dried, this is what it looks like. So I really like this shirt and I don't think that the photos do it justice. It is so much prettier in person. I really like the fact that the shirt didn't start out white. I like the blue part in the shirt. I think that's super cool. I don't know about you, but I was a little concerned when the shirt turned bright orange in the color remover. However, I was really happy with the color it ended up as after it had gone through the washing machine. I also like making this design where the lines are closer together toward the center of the shirt. I think it gives a lot of depth to it. And thankfully, my liquid dyed color samples were pretty accurate. So you can tell the difference between the two forest green colors. So overall, I really, really like the shirt. Why don't you leave me a comment down below and tell me what you think about it? Also, if you enjoyed this video, I sure would appreciate it if you would like it and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you all for watching, and I hope you have a great day.